camera talks to me, it doesn't think I stop. But anyway, welcome to the next episode. Here, the subject, because it is that time of year, we are going to talk about gardening and green thumbs and just plants in general. So, I hope you enjoy. And as always, uh, buckle up, lean the seat back, and uh, enjoy. You are now on the road with Derek Outdoors. Okay, so as I said, we are going to talk about gardening. And I guess, probably, I should give you a little intro. Uh, my first experience in, in gardening was whenever I was a very little kid. Uh, my pap always did a massive garden and um, well it looked usually like the best place in the world to play and uh, you know all kinds of different plants and there's the black dirt well you, you find out real quick that you don't play in pap's garden but after you get scolded about playing in the garden, he would then proceed to walk you through and teach you about all the different plants. And then it went from let's go play in Pap's garden to let's help Pap with the garden. Because then we got to use tools. That was great. And you got to play with a hose. And um, that kind of that started it for me. And as soon as I was able to have my own garden, well, I did, and I have. Now, I guess one of the biggest questions that most people ask, well, that I get asked at work, are, when do I plant, how do I plant, what do I do? And so I guess I guess we'll just start off at the top there with um, when you plant. Now it's gonna differ from region to region, um, and a lot of that is gonna be based on your frost cycle or um, how harsh or mild your spring can be. Um, here in southwestern Pennsylvania. Our, our springs can be sporadic. We can get frost warnings up until June. Um, we've had snow in May. We've had from April to May where it's been, I don't like after the first week of April, it, it goes, it starts, gets 60, 70, and then it just stays 80 degrees right on through. But uh, uh, most of it is how you how you navigate that and um, you don't want to lose your crop and if you're a seed starter um, one of the best ways that I have found to start your seeds to start your seedlings this is about this is about the safest way to guarantee that you're not going to lose your crop because you're, you're not going to put your seed straight into the ground in April even cold crop you'll risk killing it. So I always go by the saying, and that's if you to put it into the ground or a raised bed, first week of June, not a moment too soon. Across the board, you really, you're, you're pretty safe if you follow that rule. And I have some other fun little, I guess, gardening quips. But to start your seeds, um, I recommend usually it's like one, two, three seed starter. Or if you get really good gardening soil or raised bed soil, but I'm sure you're all familiar with the um, the organic egg trays or those paper egg trays. Well, start saving those because they'll come in racks of 24, you get 24 eggs, or you get the big cases, 48 eggs. Just start saving those. Be mindful of this, you know early spring. Be mindful of this in January to, to save these. And they're excellent seed starters. 
Now, you can mix, if you do the one, two, three, or if you do, if you compost, whichever soil you choose, um, get the soil wet first, and put it in your containers, and then if you want to get a drip tray underneath, you know, raise your containers up a little bit, get a drip tray underneath of them, and fill each, each one of those egg slots with soil, and then section off, put your seeds in there. And now keep them in a warm, dry area um, where they're going to get sunlight. And um, and, and just, just make sure that they're not going to get cold. Keep them incubated. A lot of people will take them before they sprout, wrap them in plastic. That's a, a very good method. And then once your seeds sprout, uncover them, keep them in sunlight. And on warm days, I would even recommend setting them outside for a few hours, letting them get used to sunlight, but don't, you don't want to scorch them and you don't want to set them out overnight, but maybe an hour or two a day on a hot day. Again, a hot day is going to be 50, 60, sunny. Um, let them sit out there for an hour or two to get good sunlight and then bring them in. And then after they get about an inch or so tall, then you can start to move them to the to your growing cups. And then again, put soil, wet the soil, put it in there. Then you can mix the one, two, three, if you didn't do that in the seeding process. And then you'll have all your seed starters in, in, your, in your growing cups. And uh, again, for watering your seedlings and your sproutlings, and even watering your plants in general when you get them into your garden. The rule that I always use, because even in a window you can, with that sunlight beating on them, you can still scorch your plants with sunlight. So here's the rule that I follow. Water before 11 or after 7. If the soil is dry, water apply. If the soil is wet, let it set. Now, the reason I say that, you can water the whole plant before 11 and you can water your whole plant after 7 and you don't have to worry about the leaves being wet to where it scorches them. Now, if you get very intense morning sun or even very intense late evening sun, you might want to adjust that rule and just pay attention to how hot it is. You don't want your leaves and your plants to cook. If during the heat of the day they're looking wilty and you're worried about it, you can water the soil. Just don't get water on the plant itself. It will fry the plant and it is very, very harmful. So with your seedlings, after they've sprouted two or three inches and they've established, transport that to cups. And then I would start moving them in and outside regularly or keeping them in a garage or an attic um, where they where again make sure they have sunlight but we want to start to harden our plants um, and I would typically say for younger plants nothing below 45 degrees you want to make sure they stay warmer but as they get bigger and mature, up to around six to eight inches, then you can start to cold tolerate your plants down to about 40 degrees. Now your herbs are gonna be different. There are some herbs that are pretty tolerant, um, like cilantro or your parsley, they're pretty tolerant. But others like basil, if you really enjoy your basil, don't overwater your basil. Um, if you do, your basil will rot out and die. If you give it too much sun, it'll get heat stroke and die. Basil is very finicky, partly shaded, semi-damp soil for any of your basils. Um, for your cilantro, whenever it first starts to sprout, it, it's going to sprout like crazy. And it's going to fight each other if you keep your cilantro tight. So I usually wait till the stalks, because they won't 
they have a hard time standing up because they're weak. So after they get about five or six inches tall, grab your plant at the base of the plant, and then use about your thumb and your index finger, your pointer finger as a measure, and then cut the whole plant right above that, and also do that with your parsley's when they're young. And then you'll think you're hurting it, but give it good water, good sunlight. They kind of behave like grass. And then you'll get a nice strong stalk where you can collect the leaves for cooking. And then your cilantro will actually produce your flour, which will give you your coriander seeds. So trim them when they're young. Now, speaking of trimming, uh, moving to your tomato plants. If you want to keep your tomatoes tame and you don't want your tomato to exceed the height of your cage, let your tomato grow to its desired height and before it flowers, top it like you would a tree. And then also if it's a vining tomato, you can control the length of the vines before they flower to where you want that bush to be. And now what you're doing is creating a bush tomato instead of a tomato that's going to run wild on you. And it's going to tell the plant to focus on producing flower and producing fruit. And the farther away that you space your tomatoes, the farther spacing that you have on your tomatoes, the less likely your tomatoes will feel that they have to compete with each other and they'll grow nice bushes. If it doesn't have buds on it, cut it away. If it's yellowing, cut it away from the plant. Get rid of it. And that's for all of your fruits and vegetables. Because your plant is going to try and heal that. And it's taking nutrients away from the budding and the fruit and vegetable producing portions of the plant. So if it's yellow, it's got to go. Um, if it's yellow... Don't let it mellow. Cut that away. And if it's brown, definitely knock it down. I know I steal that from your toilet etiquette, but the same applies to your plants. Keep them trimmed up, trimmed up. Keep them pruned. If it has buds on it, don't cut it. Let it go. You can also do the same with your cucumbers and your green beans, especially your vining cucumbers and your vining green beans. Keep the vines to the lengths that you want them. Don't let the plant take over. It will force the plant to produce in and with a bush of itself. And it's a really good way to tame them. Also, you can, if you don't want to tame it, and you're like, hey, I want to just let this go crazy, which is fine too if you have the room. A lot of the time, a lot of people don't have the room to, to allow what I, what I used to have was an 8x4 piece of garden lattice and I will put three cucumber plants in the beginning in, the, in front of that and then groom them to grow and take that lattice over and they did wonderful. I, don't, I also did the same with my sprouting green beans and they also did wonderful. So garden lattice is an excellent tool for your vining plants if you have the room. If you don't have the room you can also grow a lot of your plants, and with Bonnie, a lot of our plants are patio ready, and they will go grow great in an adequate um, pot with a cage. And we sell a lot of tomatoes and peppers that come in cages. With by cages, I mean the pot already has the cage on it, and the tomato or the pepper doesn't need to be transplanted. You can also grow broccoli in the exact same setup, cauliflower in the exact same setup, and it's really nice for people who have limited space but still enjoy gardening, or maybe they don't have a big yard, but you can grow these on a porch, and it's a really neat alternative. You can also do potted potatoes. And those are really fun. You can take a hamper, um, put about a foot of soil in it, grow your tomatoes down, bury them in there. Wait till you see a good sprout come up off of that, bury it in dirt, and then keep repeating that process till the hamper is full. 
and then again water it and set it in a place where then it can drain. And after your tomatoes, or after, sorry, your potatoes, after the potatoes have flowered, you know that you have good potatoes and then you can harvest. And that's something that you can do year round. Same with your onions. So really neat indoor growing ideas um, if you don't have the art space. A lot of people really like to go raise beds and um, that's a really good method too. Just make sure that you give your plants proper spacing or they will fight and choke each other out. I go by um, general rule of thumb. Give each plant 18 inches apart. And if you do a farrowed garden, um, if you don't know what a farrow is, that's whatever you cut until your garden and you plant in the raised portions of the soil. Give your farrows about a foot, space them about a foot. That's typically what I have done. And if you have a method of gardening or your own gardening techniques that work really well for you, by all means, don't, don't let me persuade you to try something different. Um, but that's, that's, how, that's how I've done it, and that's how I've seen it done my entire life. I'm 34 years old, I was introduced to gardening when I was five. I'll be 35 this year, so that's 30 years of experience. Um, with gardening and plants, so um, I do have a green thumb, and by all means, a green thumb is something that can be taught, and um, so I'm hoping to impart some of my knowledge, but again, your spacing, 18 inches per plant, that way they don't choke each other out, and they don't fight. Um, your pumpkins, if you do a pumpkin patch, you're going to want more room on those. Your vining plants, you're going to want more room. Two or three feet, they will take over. I have grown 20 pound of vegetables in a 10 pound place. And it is really, really hard. There's a lot of management, there's a lot of vine control. Um, keep your garden weeded. I don't recommend pesticides on your, on your garden unless you have a serious problem. Um, blight is something to look out for and you can treat your tomatoes for blights, but I know a lot of people like to go organic. I, I like to garden organically and use compost. So a good method for composting is compost all year. Let it sit throughout the winter and then that's what I will till into my garden in the beginning of the year. Again, this year I don't have a lot of room. So I am using my raised sun porch and I am testing our potted plant method. I have all of my vegetables in pots this year and I'm going to see how they do. And uh, I'll make a video on it after they're, they're along. They're doing really well. So I, I want to put the patio ready method to the test and that's been my garden this year. Um, another plant that you can bushel and trim are your zucchinis. They can also go on lattice. And again with your cucumbers and your zucchinis and any of your seed crop. If you want those excellent fruits, don't, um, I don't like any of that stuff. I like fried zucchini and I like pickles. But um, the wife and the kids, they love zucchinis. And they really like uh, their zucchini fritters, which I like zucchini fritters and fried zucchini. But keep your cucumbers in your zucchinis. Pick them. Don't let them get more than eight inches. It keeps the seeds smaller and um, it makes the fruit sweeter and the smaller the seeds, more enjoyable your fruit seems to be. So that was a trick that I was taught. My pap loved zucchini and cucumber. My wife loves zucchini and cucumber so the kids. So I grow it and I will pick them right when they're like six inches long is uh, the, the perfect time. Now with your green beans and your peas and other seeded fruit you will get multiple harvests. So always be checking your plants. 
and with your tomatoes and stuff, keep picking. Pick, 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 pick. As soon as it's right, pick it. Green beans, as soon as they're four, three inches or longer, pick them. It'll tell the plant to keep producing fruit. If you don't pick the fruit, and it's the same with your strawberries and your other berries, if you do berry bushels, pick, pick, pick. As soon as they turn right, don't let them sit and wait for a large yield. The more that you pick your fruits and vegetables off your plants, the more it'll tell your plants to produce throughout the season. Because in the wild, especially with your berries, that's how they spread and that's how the plants germinate and produce. So if their plants, if the berries aren't getting eaten or picked off the plant, the plant will be conservative and save its energy. But whenever the berries and your fruits, especially on your seeded veggies and your tomatoes, your seeded fruits, your tomatoes and, and such, whenever it's being harvested continuously, it keeps that plant in a constant state of growth. So don't be afraid to pick them and freeze them. Same can be said for your broccoli. Now, make sure that you blanch your broccoli. You want to give it a really quick boil if you're going to freeze it. If you're going to can it, you don't have to worry about blanching it too much. Um, and if you're somebody who does a big garden and you like to can, then I really have nothing to say to you. You probably have your system down and I won't go into it, but if you want to get into canning, there's a lot of interesting methods that you can use to can. Um, you can test out uh, boiling your jars. Um, I recommend looking it up, doing your research, and see if it's something that's viable for you before you go and buy a canner or get 1,200 mason jars. So look into it and see if it's something that really want to pursue and um, start I always say start small keep your garden small if you're gonna start keep your herbs small before you start um, don't go big um, gardening can be expensive so stay small to start and grow as you need to grow uh, pun intended um, so each year and you and uh, learn what you like learn about the different types of plants. Um, just for instance, there are so many kinds of tomatoes and tomatoes to suit uh, your needs. Um, for instance, a lot of your yellow tomatoes and your orange tomatoes, they're going to be a lot less acidic and they're really good for people who have that acid reflux. But still want to enjoy a good tomato sandwich or a really good cherry tomato on, on their sandwich. But I'll just run through because it can be mind-boggling what we carry. Bonnie Originals, Mr. Stripe and Sun Sugar, Sweet Millions, Super Sweet 100s, Little Bigs, Cherries, Chocolate Sprinkles, Husky Cherry Reds, Big Beef, Red Beef, Big Beef Steak, Bush Goliath, Bush Hybrid, Better Bush. Celebrity. I believe I said Bonnie Original. Purple um, Cherokee Purples. Um, Black Princes. Um, Lemon Boys. Better Boys. Big Boys. Early Girls. Um, Tammy G's. Romas. Sam Marzano. Hybrid grapes. Um, oh, there's a purple one other than Cherokee purple. Uh, paused on that one. But Lemon Boys. Um, pretty sure I said Sun Sugars. But you can, oh, Midnight Snacks. Um, but you get the point. So do your research. They all have different tastes. And, um, you know, maybe go to, to go to somebody who grows all these different kinds of tomatoes. Or, you know, do your research for what the different kinds of tomatoes are for. From your paste tomatoes to your sandwich tomatoes. 
and uh, your cherry tomatoes. So, and the same can be said with your cucumbers. They're Ichabod cucumbers. Uh, there are the straight eights, burpless hybrids, bush cucumbers, lining cucumbers. So, really do your research before you before you put your garden in. And like I said, I know as soon as it gets nice out, people get that itch to plant, but please remember, first week of June, not a moment too soon. Water, before 11 and after seven. If the soil is dry, water apply. If the soil is wet, let it set. You can drown your plants just as quickly as you can dry them out. Never water the leaves in midday. Do your research. There are hundreds of varieties of tomatoes out there, hundreds of varieties of peppers out there. Red bells, yellow bells, orange bells, bonnie bells, big bertha bells, big bertha jalapenos, regular jalapenos, uh, serranos, poblanos, anaheims, hot cayennes, sweet banana, hot banana, Red Ghost, Habanero, oh my gosh, I could go on, but you get the picture. So do your research and find plants that suit your taste and really what you want to do. So I hope that helps you. I hope it's food for thought. May your garden grow and I've hoped you enjoyed being on the road with Derek Outdoors.